Okay, so we have our final intro here, and we're looking at geometric sequences and series. Now let's just recap what we know so far. If we have a sequence, that's an arrangement of terms. In our case, A is our first term, then A times R, the common ratio, and so on and so forth, all the way up to A times R to the N minus one. Our series to some value N, it represents A plus A R all the way up to the nth term, which is A times R to the N minus one. And we even said that these partial sums up to the nth term end up equaling A minus A times R to the N over one minus R. But what if we're series, our series are going not to some specific number? What if our series are going up to infinity? That's an infinity symbol. What do we do then? Well, it turns out, look at this amazing formula. If you're looking at a series uh, up to infinity, you can say the series will equal a divided by one minus r when the absolute value of r is less than one. So this, this simple formula works in specific cases where our common ratio is a fraction essentially between zero and one or between zero and negative one. And um, what we should also say is that um, I don't know if I actually, I'm wondering if this is work when r is zero. We'll explore that. Uh, but what we can now say is that we have a way of dealing with infinity. That's amazing. Uh, let's say where it won't work. So s equals a over one minus r won't work if the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio is greater than one. So for example, if you have one and you double it to get two, double, four, double, eight, so on and so forth. In our case right here, any, you know, the nth term, the nth term is now just one times two to the n minus one, right? But then it keeps going. If you were to add all of these up, right? If you were to add all these up, it would be approaching infinity. There's no number we can really work with here. And that's because r is too large, r equals two. It's not, the absolute value of r is not less than one. So we can't analyze it. It doesn't converge towards some number. If you added all these up, it would just go towards infinity. However, if r, the absolute value of r is less than one, we can actually work with this. Let's look at an example and then we'll prove the formula. So let's say an example where r is actually, the absolute value of r is actually less than one. So you start with four, then you have four fifths, plus four over 25 plus four over 125, and so on and so forth. Now here you might notice right away, and again you can figure it out by saying a is four, r equals four fifths over four, which is uh, one fifth. That means that the nth step is just four times one fifth to the n minus one power. That's a little sloppy, let's fix that. n minus one power. Now, this sequence goes on, on and on, the series goes on and on forever, we're adding. And I switched from addition to commas, let me fix that. We have a series here, we're adding. All right, so our formula says that in this case, this ser series start is, will equal 4a over 1 minus r, 1 minus 1 fifth. And that's 4 over what? Well, 5 over 5 minus 1 over 5 is 4 fifths. And that equals four times five over four, which equals five. In other words, if we kept adding up these numbers, it would approach the number five. And we become so close to five that it essentially equals five, but never go over it. Amazing stuff. How do we know this? I think some of the early intuition over some of the famous series behind this intuition would be something like this. There's a classic problem. You have a half plus a fourth plus an eighth you're having. So instead of doubling, you're having. Very intuitive. One over two to the nth, two to the n, and so on and so forth. So in this case right here, if we look at the intuition, we say, okay, imagine there's some square. Imagine I just drew a square, and it's one by one. So the area of this square is one. Okay, we can actually take this series and fit it inside this square. Think about it, we start with a half. Okay, there's a half. Then we add a fourth to that, so half of a half. Then we add an eighth, a half of a fourth. Then we would add a sixteenth, a half of an eighth. And so on 
and so forth forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And these are getting smaller and smaller as we add them. So clearly uh, our areas that we're adding are smaller and smaller and smaller. And you can always kind of subdivide the little empty space there into another half. And you'll never run out of space mathematically. However, when you add up all these fractions forever, you get so close to filling this box that it might as well be completely full. And if you complete, or this box is completely full, so full that you can't even um, reasonably measure the empty space, we say that this is approaching a full area of one. So we know something, that if you were to look at this right here and say, eventually, we'll get to one. And another way to think about that, algebraically, let's say we do our first partial sum as a half, our second partial sum is 3 fourths, right, a half plus a fourth. Our third partial sum is a half plus a fourth plus an eighth, or seven eighths. In general, as we go along here, we can say that you can see the powers of 2, 2 to the first, 2 to the second, 2 to the third. We have 2 to the n on the bottom, and then 1 less than that on the top. So that power of 2 minus 1. If we simplify this, 2 to the n over 2 to the n is 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, we can see that, oh, look at that. As n approaches infinity, as n approaches infinity, that's my infinity, this is going to approach 1 minus 0. So 1 over 2 to the n, you know, imagine 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th. This gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So you're splitting 1 into more and more and more and more parts. So the more parts you split one into, the smaller this whole ratio gets, and eventually this approaches zero. So close to zero, it's indistinguishable, essentially. So as n approaches infinity, this fraction approaches zero, and therefore the partial sum will just approach one, because one minus zero is one. And that's some of the thinking algebraically. You can show in the algebra, but in general we want to show this, not for some specific example, and that's where our proof comes into play. I love this proof. Imagine this is going to be my notation for an infinite partial sum, whatever that means, an infinite sum of a series. It goes on forever. So not up to the nth step, but forever. In general, that means we have a plus a r plus a r squared plus some a times r to the n minus 1 uh, forever. Well, that's really the same thing, if we think about this, as a plus, let's factor r out of all these terms, r times a plus r, excuse me, uh, r factored out of this term just leaves an a, but r factored out of this term, what does that leave? What well, just gives us an a times an r? And then it's going to get us a r squared, because we have an a r cubed here, so it's a r squared, plus dot dot dot, factor an r out of this, or divide it by one of the r's, you have a times r to the n. Um, and let me see, actually, let me that with that. A times r to the n divided by r to the first. When you're factoring out r, you're essentially dividing each term by r. So it's n minus 1 minus 1, and that's n minus 2. Remember, you just subtract the exponents when you're dividing. Um, and then we keep going. Um, after n minus 2, I'm going to put that so you can really see this, by the way. The next thing would be a times r to the n minus 1 to match that term, and then we just keep going. Wow, what does that mean? Infinity does weird things, right? It's, so this tells us that here's our original sum completely, this whole thing right here. But then if we factor r out, we can see that it appears again. So there's our original sum. And that means that the, the sum of the series equals a plus r times the sum of this series. And if we want to find s, we subtract rs on both sides, a minus rs, and that equals a, I said a minus r, s minus rs, and that equals a. We factor s out, we get 1 minus r, right, divide both terms by s, that equals a, and that means that s equals what? Well, it equals a divided by 1 over r, and there's our formula. It's amazing stuff. Now, there are all types of problems we can apply this to. It's in finance, has all kinds of applications, but it's still a beautiful thing on its own. The one thing I want to apply it to, I thought this is a neat opportunity to explore this, is to turn repeating decimals into fractions. So let's say we had 3.142 repeating. I know you want it to be pi. I apologize for using that. That might really irk you. Um, but here's an opportunity to really use a geometric series. And you don't need to use a series to solve this. There are other ways of dealing with it. 
But I'm just going to show you how to deal with this using a series. So this could be thought of as, first, take your non-repeating part. We're trying to write it as a fraction, so that's 31 over 10. Then, you know, if we think about what this is saying, it's 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, and so on and so forth. Um, the next piece, let's look at this right here. We have 42. Let me highlight that. It's a little hard to read. 42 over 1,000. This is in the thousandth place, so we, do, we can say it's 42 over 1,000. We're just adding these pieces. Then we have our next 42. This is 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. So it's plus 42 over 100,000. Plus, let's do one more. I'll do green. 42, this is 100,000. Then 10 times more is a million. This is 10 million. So it's 42 out of 10 million, and this goes on forever. Right, this will keep going. And that means that this part of our fraction is a geometric series. So this decimal equals 31 over 10. 30, this equals 31 over 10 plus this. So how can we sum this up? Well, we can say that A equals 42 over 1,000. And R, you might see that R is 1 one hundredth, but let's just conclude that. It's 42 over 100,000 divided by 42 over 1,000. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means we have 42 over 100,000 times 1,000, the reciprocal over 42. The 42s cancel. These two zeros cancel with those two zeros. These three zeros cancel with these three zeros. And we have 1 over 100. That's our R value. 1 over 100. So our R value, the absolute value, is less than 1. So we can use our infinite series formula. And that, if you remember, is A over 1 minus R. So this thing can be represented as A, 42 over 1,000 over 1 minus r, 1 over 1 minus 1 one hundredth. And if you put these fractions together, you will get a fraction that gives you this repeating decimal. So maybe take a moment and try that out, and then press play to see what I got. So in this case, I get 1037 over 330. And uh, you can set that up directly on the calculator, and I'll just show you what it looks like. And once you have it in the calculator, press the math button, whatever decimal you have, hit enter for fraction, and it will give you the same result if you're um, having an issue doing it by hand. But that's just a nice application. And again, you don't need to use a series for this. There are many ways at this problem. But that's just one idea that you might use. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.